G'day, how you all going out there? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, or Ianapolis, your acrylic guru. How you all doing, eh? Glad you can join me. Now, I'm going to do a Halloween one today, a pumpkin with, you know, the bright sun situation behind it with some darkness and some fence and, you know, Halloween. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'm going to use it on that size canvas there, which is in centimetres. And to the side of me there, there's going to be some colours that are going up the um, screen there. And there's a colour I want in here that I've got to mix. Okay. Now, I want to show you something. Earlier on, I, I made some reference charts. Can you see them? I'll look at my monitor there. They're, I've mixed up colours to get colours, and they're a reference. Okay. I've done a video on these. But today... I want to use this sort of dark browny chocolatey colour. So I've gone to my reference card and I've used Van Dyke Brown and Red and Blue to create that. These are just other examples how I've got all these different colours. I've got my own reference here. So I go to them when I need it. And in this one, I need it, all right? <laughs> Spray me canvas board with some water, just basic water out of my squirty bottle like that. I want to get an applicating brush. I call it an applicating brush because it applies the paint to the canvas. Now come down here on my palette and I've got my white flowing paint with some retarder and I've also got some deoxine purple with retarder because this is going to be blended up onto the canvas up there. All right, that's wet. It looks a bit dry again. I'll get it wet. Why I wet it, is it lets this flow paint flow across that canvas a lot more easier. So I'm just getting it, getting it on the canvas. I'm not worried about brush marks at this stage. This is a good pumpkin for all you beginners out there. You've seen the picture in the opening credits there. So we'll just get that all on like that it's that easy brush your brush strokes out okay that's done and now I've got some of the colors for the orange and the yellow have a look I've got mid yellow and I've got orange gold well it's not orange gold it's red gold sorry or you can just use orange and they've got some retarder mixed in it as well now I want my pouncer and I'm going to start with the yellow get it all onto my pouncer. Now I want my sun about here. So we're gonna, I wanna stamp this around. This has got retarder in it as well, this yellow, but I'm starting with the yellow first, getting it to the size that I want. Come out here. Now I'm going to use this pouncer to get all that blended. I'm dabbing it on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off like that. I'm blending it with this. Not too hard, is it? If you don't have a pouncer and you like a lot of the tutorials I do, make an effort to get yourself one or make yourself one. All right? Anyway, now we've got to clean this pouncer. Right, my pounce is clean. Now I'm getting that red gold, which has the retarder in it, and I'm incorporating that right into this pouncer here, making sure it's full of colour. Now, I want to bring this from the edge and have it fading into the yellow. So we'll come around like this. Now I want to darken that same track that I just put on there, darken it up again, because we're wanting an orangey, burnt, sun sort of colour. Something bright. There you go. It's blended into that yellow. Okay? And it's slowly coming off the pouncer as well. I am not, haven't loaded the pouncer again, depending how wet your paint is. Now, obviously, you don't want a stupid circle like that, do you? You want to blend it in and make it look real arty. So what we'll do now, we're going to start blending that into the 
yellow that's less paint onto that pouncer. How's that looking in my... And come in a bit more. Now I'm going to grab my brush. Put that down. I'm going to grab my blending brush and blend that now to get rid of the spongy marks. And it sort of softens the tone. See, we're softening in that back. You get your brush and make sure you keep cleaning it. Now, the, all that retarder that I've put on there has allowed all this to stay gooey and wet and moist. You want everything nice and moist when you want to do something you love. And it's allowing it to blend like this. If it never had the medium retarder in it, you can blend it with just water. But water, you're limited how much time you have as well. Because water can sort of put on its brakes and stop you in your tracks. I always use this clear medium retarder, I love it. So now, you can see all these, I'm just making that a lot neater. So I'm using the brush to wash it, clean it, move the paint around. That's looking all right. How's it looking in the monitor there? It's getting to what I want. Now what I'm doing is I'm carefully blending the edge out into that white a bit, all right? Just so it's feathered out, softened out. To, it's not a harsh edge like this, okay? This is a great painting for beginners if you want to do your Halloween subject. Twist your brush on and off. Blending's all about feeling. Okay, the pouncer's clean. I've got some good quality white there. I'm just putting that into the pouncer. Loading it all over it. And I want to just get a bit of a, a glare in the middle. A white glare. So it's not just yellow and orange. It's making it lighter colour, which is good. And we're going to dance it around till it fades away. Just like that. How's that looking? That's pretty glary. All right. Now, I'm going to put that down. Grab my blending brush. Wipe it. Now, see the end here? I just got to softly... I'm just, I, you can just stamp this it's, and, and just merge it. If you're happy with the way it looks like that, leave it. If you want to go that extra mile like I'm doing, stamp it through, blend it into the yellow. It's just so we've got an intense middle section there, okay? That's all it did. You can see what it's done. <laughs> Okay, slowly getting the background done. Now what I want to do is add the dark scene purple in the background and I'm going to merge that into these red, golds and yellows, all right? So we'll get a, I've showed you the dioxine purple down there. I'll grab my applying brush and we'll get, that's got retarder in it. Now I'll start over here. I'm going to start off the canvas and I'm, I'm not stamping this on. I'll tell you what, you come in a little bit closer and you'll see what I'm doing all right. Now, I'm not stamping it on, I'm brushing it in. Why am I brushing it in? Because it's picking up the white underneath, which is something I want it to do. Now, I'm coming to the purple there. I'm not the purple, this, this here. Let's just go about to, because we're, we're going to have ground cover there. So we've... Put all that in there like that. Just like so. Now we're going to grab a blending brush. 
And I want to blend this purple on its own first to get rid of all those ugly brush strokes, scratchy brush strokes. I'm getting rid of those. So we're blending this. And I'm going to show you when you blend, the way I'm blending, that's full of paint. You don't want that on your brush when you start merging into the orangey colour. What I might do is grab another brush and I'm going to blend that purple just softly like that. That's a, another clean brush. Look at that. That's softly going into that orange. Wipe the brush up the top here. Merge them together so it's like they're they're two people that just met, they're falling in love and they're really deep into each other. They're loving it. They can't believe their luck. Look at that. They had a lucky day today. They met the perfect match. Some colours are easier to blend into others than others are. But we'll get away with this. Now I'm going to blend all this out of here and I'm going to do the same to the other side. All right, now I just want to give it a bit of more depth, say about here. So I'm stamping this on now, I'm get, getting the dioxine. I'm coming from the bottom where the actual ground's probably going to be and up the corners, give it the traditional dark corners. And we'll blend that in as well into that lighter purple. Try not to kill it as you blend it. You can kill it straight away if you blend too heavy. Is that picking that up? Yeah, look at that, see? So we've just got our darker corners there blending in. I tell you what, you know, this is a sky. It's sort of a night sky. I'll do something interesting. You might like it or you might not, eh? If you don't like it, don't do it. But I'll show you in a minute. Just let me blend this purple. Deoxine purple it is. I had trouble pronouncing that colour when I first started using it. All right. All right, it's a night sky. We, we can leave it like that. But let's put some spooky mist. So well, this is just with my fan brush, some white, stamping it on carefully. Putting it down like a gentleman and picking up your beautiful lady with a lovely dress. And we're going to take her dancing on the canvas. Okay, pet. I said love, I said pet. You start dancing. Now we're going to blend this to some eerie, beautiful, soft, fluffy, whipped cream, marshmallow mist. See, I'm doing the purpley bit first. See, it sort of made it look like washy, beautiful stuff in there. Now, I've got to wipe the brush pretty well before I come into that orange side. Otherwise, I'm going to bring too much deoxine. So I've wiped it, and that's sort of carrying on into here like that. It's sort of like clouds, but they just didn't have the balls to create themselves into a cloud. They just failed, and they just started as mist. So we'll put some of that on, a, on each side of the painting. So we'll pick it up again, the white, and we'll probably come across here like that. It's sort of like doing a cloud, but like I said, you're blending the hell out of all of it and it's turning it into mist. But you constantly wipe your blending brush. Make sure you wipe that blending brush and you're turning that into lovely sky night, sky mist over there. How's that looking in the monitor? I want to get a bit more in there. All right, I'm just putting a bit more on top of it because it sort of looks a bit bold. So I wipe my brush. And I'm sort of giving it a, a double layer, but still blending it. And that's the magic of that retarder. There we go. 
go. That looks all right. I'm happy with that. Okay, I've just got a toothpick here and I'm sort of scratching and this is still wet. That's roughly where my ground's going to be, all right? And the pumpkin is going to be, I don't want to, uh, how big can I make this pumpkin? I want to sort of come into the edge there a bit. So about there and about here. And you'll obviously, so this is going to be the, the pumpkin probably Somewhere there with his top bit on there. Now in the pumpkin, we want a, we want a face. So I'm going to have an eye here somewhere. Another eye here. And then his mouth. All right. Now, in those eyes, the area where the eyes and mouth are going to be, I want to glare it up. Now, I've got a soft filbert brush. It's, it's soft and gentle. I'm using that. I'm loading up my white structured paint there. We're dancing that around in the mouth, in the center of the mouth, so it's going to have some highlights in there and shine and sparkle. So we'll put a bit more on just to intensify it. And then we're blending out into that orange there. Now, see his eyes? Do the same with his eyes. So where his eyes are, we want a little bit in where his eyes are. Blend it out on the other side. All right. And then to finish it off, I'll really put white in there. I'm going to wipe that brush and just use it to merge that now into the orange. Just merge it. I'm barely touching it. Wipe your brush as you go. Same with the eyes. Just sort of give it some merging. I've got a friend with me today, you can't see him, but it's good to have company when I make these videos because I get to have a cuppa with somebody, I get to be happy. All right. See, I've just, there we go. Dance it, dance it, dance it. In my mind, this is coming along good, but also this is probably the ugly part of the painting where you're probably thinking, my God, Ian, what's it going to be? It's going to be all right when we put that pumpkin over there. Don't you worry about nothing. It's going to be that easy, all right? Now, you might notice as well, me, me poor easel, it's, it's always getting paint on it, but what I do after every video and all the editing's finished and the palette's clean, I've got to come here with matte black paint and I've got to virtually clean all this up and repaint it again before every video it's just so it's more presentable every time I do a film okay so now I think we're ready for the pumpkin and what I will do I think just because I'll, I think I should I'll I'll draw a, a pumpkin and I'll make a traceable for it for those who can't just do a freehand pumpkin all right and that way it'll be real easy for you eh? I'm telling you right now and I've told you that for nothing now, um, like I said, me mates here, Jason, we're gonna we're gonna whack that kettle on, and um, I can get other colours ready to um, finish this painting. All right. All right. Now, like I told you before, that where'd my colour chart go? Here we go. I want this sort of dark chocolatey brown colour. Okay. I don't know if the camera's picking up the colour correctly there, but that's what I'm going to mix. So I'm going to get my Van Dyke brown my red and a blue onto my little palette here. All right, so I've got my Van Dyke Brown, my Crimson Red, and I've got a 
red tinged phthalo blue. So there's me brown. We'll get the blue in there. We'll get the red in there. I've got to make enough of this to colour in the pumpkin and the foreground grass, okay? So we're virtually mixing all this together and I'm getting a really deep, dark, chocolatey brown. Now I'm going to use a flat brush, okay? My flat brush and um, probably need some water with that as well to help it flow off the brush and onto the canvas easier as well. All right, now I've given this a quick dry around that area there and I want to give my pumpkin a bit of a, a top and some sort of pumpkin-y shape, just around like that. Keeping the edges nice and sharp, okay? Now, like I said, I'll, I'll draw a picture of this pumpkin and I'll make a traceable for those of you who can't wing it freehand, okay? But I'm just getting the edges done and see so you'll see why I've picked this colour. It's nice, chocolatey and brown. Now, I'm going to go to his eyes. Oh, I could have had his eyes more closer to the middle. I'll make the traceable a lot more. This I just did off my head, so it's looking like this. Get the edges nice and sharp. See there, nice and sharp. Uh, and we'll come around here as well. <clears throat> There's one eye, because what you can do later on, you've got that nice sharp edge there, you can come along and just fill all this in like that, all right? See, the light is behind this pumpkin, so the pumpkin in front is gonna look dark. That's how lights work. All right, that's pretty much coloured in. Now, I want to just quickly colour the, the bottom in here as well. And then we'll start adding the finishing details to this Halloween piece. I'm leaving this top bit scratchy because I want to pull it up like grass. Okay. Alright, grab yourself a nice scratchy brush. I'm using my hog bristle fan brush. Now I'm loading up that paint and I'm going to load it up under that area there, like so, just so I've got something to push up for the pointy grass instead of doing it individually. And then get your brush and we'll see if we can get it. Yeah, that'll do. I'll try it this way. Yeah, that's even better. Just to get some grass up there. Get it up there, scratch it up. So we've got nice pointy grass there, see? And then we'll do the same on the other side. So we'll just bomb it up, bomb it on, bomb it on, bomb it on. Wipe your brush so all the dags are off it and scratch it up. <sighs> see, I made these like big blobs. You wanna try and get it a if you can, a bit more hairy, that's it. And then you can finish your brush strokes down into here, okay? But that's just a simple, easy way to do some front silhouette foliage. Now we're gonna put a tree on this side because I've got some light color here. So I can put the tree, the silhouette tree in front of that. Over here is a bit darker. So I'm gonna choose this side. I'm using a, one of these sort of brushes, I don't know what they're called. I'm just twisting it through that paint and we'll get some sort of a spooky tree. I should probably should, could have went online and found a spooky tree. So we'll sort of come along. I'm twisting it as I go to get the... About up there. I need it more wet. That paint is not wet enough. So... Gonna come along. <laughs> Need it more wet. This is like a big script liner. 
and get it nice and wet. I'll get the bases of the tree in and then I'll detail it. Yeah, see when it's wet, you get it more solid. Get something out here, just coming off the side there. Twisting it, twisting it, that'll do. Oh, I'm bloody hopeless at trees, eh? Do your style of tree what you think you're good at. I'm just doing this one. I'm going to have to study how to do a really good tree. And then I'm going to use my script liner and put some finer branches on this tree. You want the paint wet so it's going to flow twisted onto your script liner. And where the tops of these are broken up, I'm going to join onto them and try and get them nice and sharp, wiggly and pointy. It's got to be a lot more wetter. It's not wet enough, so I've just wet it some more. And we'll go again, we'll come off this one here. Yeah, look at that, see when it's wet, it goes beautifully. Nice. We'll get some branches coming off him. Bring some down. All over the place. Look at that with that light behind it. It looks beautiful. Try not to make it flat. If you bring some branches over and down, it sort of creates that look of going back or forth with the, with the branch. Twist up there. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. This is the fun bit where it's coming almost to the end. How are we looking in the monitor there? All right, so we'll put a bit of a, maybe a graveyard fence. Now, I could have put another tree here, but I don't want everything too even, you know? You don't want to even up a painting. You want things sort of odd. Odd numbers look better in a painting. So we'll put a bit of a fence here, and this is the part where I can cherish a beautiful mouthful of me coffee there. Like I've said in previous videos, don't neglect your coffee. This one ain't neglected. You know why? Because it's still warm. It's got warmth in it. When your coffee's got warmth in it, it is not neglected. But if you pick it up and it's stone cold, you've gone and done a bad sin to your coffee. You've neglected the darn thing. All right, we'll get onto a fence here. So I'm going to use that same script liner. And um, we'll, put a, we'll put a fence in over here somewhere. So i tell you what, you better come in a bit closer because if you think you're going to stand that far back and watch, you won't see what I'm doing, all right? So come on, get in here. All right, this is just a, a wickety, like a, a graveyard fence. Some posts can be a bit higher than others. They can be a bit bent. Not too bent. You don't want it looking like a damn tree. It's, it's sort of wrought irony fence, this. And then we'll, we'll give it a one across... I'm twisting the brush as I go. I'll stop at that one. And there. And we'll just put a bit more of another one on this side. We'll come all the way across roughly where I think my fence will be in the shadows. And another one here. This chocolatey colour looks brilliant against that orange. It's sort of like that Jaffa chocolate. And then let's get some straight up rights in there. Go all the way down to your... Have some level with the... Just a bit beyond level of the, the top beam. And some going right past it. And that's pretty much our rickety fence. I might get a bit... something at the end there all right all right I've dried that now what we'll do we'll, we'll put an autograph on here and we'll frame it and see how this one looks in a frame all right so I'll just put my signature down here with Steve's footprint <laughs> I 
Okay, I've just signed it, but I've just realised I've forgotten the teeth, so I'll quickly grab my flathead brush and we'll whack some teeth in here. So we'll put probably one that side, one that side, where's Steve? Steve's out there, and um, one in the middle of his mouth there like that. Can you see that? Use this square brush to lock in some teeth. Now we'll put a frame on that and see how it goes. All right, so we'll, we'll just whack a frame on that and see how she looks. Can you pass us that frame please, Jason? There you go, buddy. Good on you, thanks. No man. worries, mate, no worries. Right, hey, we'll see what this looks like with a frame on there. There you go, that's not too shabby, is it? We've got our pumpkin, we've got the right, the bright sun sort of going down in the sky, or it's a halloween -y sky, we've got some mist in the sky, we've got a graveyard fence. It's all happening there, all right? Hope you enjoyed this easy beginner's exercise, just a Halloween pumpkin, something for the beginners to get involved with. So it's very easy, but also effective, okay? If you like what I do, tell a friend, but if you don't, tell everybody. And be sure to look at the link in the description below, because there's a link to my Patreon page, okay? Join and become a patron and help support my content. And I can be here more often, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.